Okay, what you see behind me is my new 2019 Honda Civic Type R. Now, this video is going to be a short one and a quick one, just explaining to you why people tell you not to buy salvaged vehicles. For instance, when I bought the vehicle, I bought it with a salvage certificate instead of a title. I was told it's the title, it's not, um, it's not that simple. I just didn't know anything about it, now I know better. A certificate just means that you take on the responsibility of the rebuilder, meaning that you have to go through all the certifications, you have to go do the airbag inspections, you have to go through showing all the receipts for all the parts that were um, put on this vehicle and to rebuild it, and then um, you have to go do a CHP inspection, and then you go to a DMV inspection, or sorry, to the DMV to register it. After all that's done, you can have your title. Now, all that's really easy if you don't have a shady rebuilder or if you didn't buy it from somebody and don't have contact to that rebuilder anymore. If you don't, you have to prove all of those receipts by yourself, you have to do the airbag inspections, everything by yourself. So that's what I did, and now hopefully within this week, this car should be registered. A um, couple other things just to look out for, and um, I've actually gone through, I've replaced all the airbags myself. Um, it has all new airbags, all new crash sensors now, so I know I'm safe in the vehicle, and I, it's good peace of mind. Um, there's a couple of things that I'm gonna walk you through just to look out for, especially when you're buying one of these, um, just because now that I know what I know, um, maybe I can help you make a better choice on buying a salvage vehicle. I think it's a great idea if you don't have the cash. I think right around now these things are selling for about thirty-five to forty thousand dollars. I didn't have that. I got it far cheaper than that um, by actually trading my last vehicle in for it um, to another person. So um, yeah, this will be a quick just walk around of things I would look for next time I go um, to purchase one of these, and I'll do a little walk around around the vehicle. Okay, so the vehicle when I bought it already had aftermarket taillights installed and it, did, it was missing a wing. So the wings are pretty expensive. Um, this is a color matched eBay wing that actually mounts up to the stock OEM location. So that's awesome. That cost me around $300. And then the seller actually refunded me some of that because there was some hardware missing and some things that probably could have been done better. Um, so after I complained, they sent me a little bit of money back. Um, I'm happy with it now because I made it work. Um, the rear end had been in an accident a long, long time ago, a very small accident, everything's fixed, everything looks good there. However, when you go and purchase one of these vehicles, get underneath it, um, see if you can peek in anywhere and make sure that all the tabs and everything where the clips are to hook everything up aren't just taken out. A lot of times when things don't fit correctly, people or the rebuilders or whoever puts these cars back together will go and just leave clips out as long as the part is essentially stuck to the vehicle, they're cool with it. So, back end's good. Um, obviously, check out the rims. Um, I'm gonna be replacing these rims anyways, but these have some pretty significant curbing damage. And then, you also wanna check the health of your pads. Now, the easiest way of doing that is just to slide in there. I'm not gonna be able to show it well, but if you can get your phone in there, you can actually take a picture directly into that and that will help you see how thick the pads are. You wanna have a lot of life left on that. And then obviously the disc shouldn't be worn down too much and there shouldn't be any grooves in that. Now I can show you on my front brakes. It's a little bit of a different story. I've got good pad life in there. However, if you take a look and you can take your fingers and kind of run them across it, it has quite a bit of grooving. So at some point I am gonna have to get these rotors resurfaced and have the pads straightened out or sanded down um, or replace them completely. At some point I am looking to upgrade these things so I'm not going to jump the gun on anything until I know what I'm gonna do with this setup. For the tires, just make sure they're good. That's pretty average, that's normal advice. Now, fender wells are tricky too, so a good giveaway that the bumper's been off is if these, these little clips here are missing, or if there's new holes drilled or anything, or if this stuff is just not aligned, like for this, shouldn't be this loose fitting, you know. Usually when people put this stuff together, they're in a hurry, they don't put it together correctly. A lot of times you can get it to align correctly by just taking your time and taking it apart again. And a lot of times, sometimes sometimes things are bent underneath there. So, that actually brings me to the point. 
if you can get a light into here and you can see a couple of the brackets as well as where the crash sensor is located and you want to make sure those look good. In my case, the crash sensors on the other side, let me walk you over there. When I peeked in here, I could actually see the crash sensor. Now you can see it's nice and new in there. You can kind of see it back in there. It's all new now, but the old one was completely smashed up and they had just taken the crash sensor and zip tied it back on and then put the bent piece back on. So I had to replace all of that just as a safe measure. Now in my case, and this is the really, really important part. When I purchased the vehicle, the steering wheel airbag had been replaced. Now the screws in the back were loose, so it felt very loose. I got to tighten those, that fixed it. However, the, uh, the curtain airbag was completely missing and had a resistor installed in that. Easiest way to do that is you can either pull the headliner back a little bit after you pull this over and you can pull the headliner, or you can just get a Phillips head screwdriver after popping this little this little piece off right here, you can take this off. It comes very easily. And then you can take a look behind that how the airbag is. In most crashes, it's only the driver that's sitting in the car. And so in most crashes, you will have possibly your driver's airbag, your seat airbag sometimes go off, your seat belts have an explosive charge in the bottom. I had to replace that completely because that was also just wired in with a resistor. So if you can somehow pop this piece off, if the person you're buying it from will allow you to do that, you can take a look in there and make sure that there's no resistor installed. Otherwise it would be popping a light um, for your airbags. In my case, the passenger airbags didn't go off because there was no passenger, so I got lucky on that. So basically curtain airbags, the this airbag had to re be replaced, the steering wheel airbag, as well as the seat belt completely. I just did a whole new unit because it came with the whole thing and it's relatively cheap compared to having to rebuild the whole piece. The windshield, actually this one's important, the windshield I just replaced um, and the person that replaced it, um, it was a Superior Auto Glass and um, the guy's name, I don't remember, but I'll post it in the, in the link and I'll post maybe some video of it as well of him installing it. When he installed it, he's a real expert. He showed me when it came off that the old windshield had been replaced already before and there is the bead that runs around the entire windshield and at the bottom, right above the bottom bead, there's another bead that's supposed to be ran. I can't explain to you what it's for, but I, he said something along the lines of like it's for safety and they didn't even bother running that strip of, or that bead of silicone down there. So it's another thing to look for when you pop the hood and if you can pop the cowl up a little bit to see underneath it, my wiper motor linkage was completely shattered um, and I had to replace that as well. That kind of sucked, but it is what it is. So now I have a new windshield, new wiper motor linkage, new airbags. same thing so the curtain airbag essentially just runs across this entire piece over here into the back there's another crash sensor lo located right underneath here that I had to replace those are the side impact sensors there's one right here and there's one down next to the bottom of where the seat belt hooks up so both of those had to be replaced in my in my case sometimes you don't need to replace them and they still work but it is just a good safety measure to do those when you're already replacing all that stuff. Now, next thing to look out for, and I didn't think I would ever have to say this, but make sure there's a subwoofer in your car. These cars came equipped with subwoofers. If you can just get a flashlight on this and you can see behind this, you can kind of tell, or if you can just pop this back and then take a peek in there. Now, I've already put a brand new subwoofer in there show you there it is but in my case that thing was completely missing which also sucks because that's another 200 and something dollars 
to replace. Otherwise, you can kind of look down in here. You know, you can pull up the foam and everything and just inspect the sheet metal down here and make sure that all looks correct. You know, you don't want to see any metal that looks like it's been punched up. And then same thing with the front and the back of the vehicle when you get underneath it. So you really want to be looking for any kind of welded areas. And I'm talking about like the factory welds, right? So I'm going to pop the hood real quick and show you something. Okay, so this is relatively new to me. This is a quick trick. If you want to put your hood up higher to work on it easier, there's another hole that you can insert the, whatever this is called. It's back here. Usually you would insert it right up here, but if you put it back here, it tilts the hood up much further. Really cool little trick to get to things a little bit easier. So what you want to be doing is you want to kind of take a look and find any spot like this that has like little welds, factory welds in it, right? And if any of those seem like they've been compromised, right? So if they're smashed or if they're weird looking or bent, that's a good sign of frame damage, right? And obviously you also want to make sure that the car aligns well. So as for the alignment papers or go align it yourself and make sure that everything looks right. You want to kind of take a look and a peek behind here, make sure that everything looks straight. In my case, the crash bar, when you take the bumper off, you'll see it, but you can't actually do that while you're looking at a car. But if you can just get a peek into, you know, the grill and take a look in there and everything and make sure that all that looks correct, because if your crash bar looks like it's smashed in or bent, that's going to be a point of concern as well, because you want to make sure those look good. In my case, another thing that was missing was this engine cover, so I went ahead and purchased that. Um, also, the best thing you can do is just hop on any OEM parts website. You're going to go ahead and just figure out which part this is. You'll put in your car and all the information. It'll give you, you know, is this a body part? Is this a whatever it is? You find this part, then you take the part number and you plug it into Google and then you just see all the different dealerships or suppliers that are selling that part. And a lot of times you'll find really, really, really cheap dealerships that are selling these parts for like 30 to 40% off of the price that you would maybe at your local dealership. That's what I did. I know one of the big ones is in Colorado. I think it's called Honda Parts Now. They do an incredible job. They have really, really good service. So I highly recommend using them. So yeah, this is, um, this is it. So, and then the whole story goes, essentially the reason why I bought the car and got it for this price or this trade is essentially because the person couldn't smog it because they had a downpipe. He told me that it was a downpipe that was gutted, but it was an OEM pipe. When I pulled it out, that wasn't true. It's actually a PRL cat or PRL catless downpipe. And it actually came with an, with an OEM pipe. He just didn't want to fit it and the OEM pipe went on just fine. Everything looks good and now it passed smog. So in California, that's really important and we're good now. So I'm really excited about this car. It's gonna be the new car on the channel. Um, it's a good looking car, I have a lot of fun with it. And I do really plan on using this car more. And what I mean with using the car more is actually driving it. I feel like typically I have vehicles and I modify them for a specific purpose, which is typically track driving or autocrossing. And I usually sell the vehicles or get rid of them or something comes up before I ever get to actually drive the car for its intended purpose. So this car is hopefully gonna be different. We're gonna be building it for autocross and track events and it's going to get that kind of parts on it as well. And so I'm excited for that. I'm excited to hopefully take it to a couple events, take you guys along, um, you know, take the GoPro along, which is actually what I'm filming on now. I'm trying something a little bit different um, and hopefully the quality of the video still stays the same. But yeah, so hopefully you'll enjoy that. Hopefully that's something you guys, um, Hopefully it's something that encourages you guys to go out and autocross and track. I've seen a lot of events lately that are illegal. I've seen a lot of street takeovers. I've seen a lot of sideshows and it just doesn't sit well with me because I just don't believe it's doing anything for the car culture. And 
it's destructive to the car culture, really. And so I want to promote legal, fun events as much as I can. I think you can have far more fun on a track day than you ever will at a takeover, but that's just my opinion. And so that's what this is gonna be. And so we've got some fun things going. I can show you a little sneak peek. We've got a little parts haul from Japan. So all of those parts are gonna be going on in the next video, hopefully, and I'll be explaining where I get those from because um, you can get them as well very cheaply and for a great price and quick shipping and straight from Japan. And the Japanese yen is pretty low right now, so it's an incredible, incredibly easy and cheap opportunity to start ordering you know authentic japanese parts like spoon parts hks parts whatever that looks like for you so and that goes for hondas subarus anything so yeah tune in for the next one this was just a fun little update and hopefully a warning to you um, if you are looking at buying a salvage vehicle i don't want you to, i don't want you to sway away from it i think it actually is a great opportunity to own really cool cars at a better price um, especially for people that make normal wages and work hard for their money and don't have enough to buy an incredibly expensive car and um, makes it easier to modify too because i'm not afraid of avoiding any factory warranties or anything. So yeah, hopefully this encourages you. Hopefully it gives you some kind of um, confidence to go forward and get your car and inspect it correctly and maybe not fall into the same um, traps as I did. Cool. See you next time. Bye-bye.